The new year hasn't started well for Hungary and its embattled Prime Minister Viktor Orban. He's already facing flak from Brussels and his own voters after making constitutional changes that affect the independence of some of the country's institutions, in particular its central bank. Last month saw Hungary's rating downgraded and most recently it was forced to cancel a bond swap auction because of unsustainably high yields. Well, with me to discuss the situation is Stefan Wagstel, our Emerging Markets Editor. Stefan, um, we can see from the chart of the foreign languishing at a record low against the euro. It's down 17% since the summer. Can you explain briefly what's working against it? A couple of things. One is the external environment, uh, in particular the eurozone crisis, which has made investors everywhere, particularly within Europe, wary um, of, of risk. And Central and Eastern European countries have suffered in that along with most other markets. But Hungary has made its own situation much worse by policies which can be best described as investor unfriendly. Uh, the Viktor Orban government has taken decisions which have annoyed at different times bankers, pension fund managers, uh, telecoms companies. Um, a particular problem right now is that last year, in, 2000 and, sorry, in 2010, he declared that Hungary no longer needed external assistance from the IMF. And it now turns out that it does. And it's a real problem to uh, turn around policy and turn around the government to make that now happen. Uh, and what's the situation at the moment with the IMF talks? The IMF talks uh, look like they will start next week, and the EU is also very much involved and very important in this. Uh, the problem is that these may only be talks about talks, very preliminary. The real issue is how, many, how much of the policy making of the last couple of years, the Hungarian which the IMF and the EU disapprove of, how much of that uh, the Hungarian government is prepared to amend and sacrifice in order to get a deal. And so what risk does this pose to on one hand, Hungary itself and, and actually to the wider region as well? There's, we've seen some uh, nervousness uh, uh, among investors, clearly investors who have regional funds and need for whatever reason to sell or have decided to sell their Hungarian investments may also need to liqui liquidate some other positions in the region. However, the, this is a, quite a different situation from 2009 when at the beginning of the global turmoil people tended to lump all the East European countries together. Now there's much more discrimination. So at the moment, while there is some nervousness, and there is certainly not full-scale conta full scale contagion, and people are looking at these countries one by one, quite rightly. Um, and I mentioned that the, the bond auction that hopes to go ahead has been cancelled because of these, these very high yields, these unsustainably high yields, which we can, we can see in the chart. Um, what, what is it that Hungary needs to do now to sort of get that under control, to, to regain some market credibility? What the market's looking for is a real willingness on the part of the Hungarian authorities to go and talk to the IMF. Hungary, it has to be said, has done some things right in the last three years in terms of correcting macroeconomic imbalances in its economy and investors have given it credit but it now needs that IMF help which its neighbours for example Romania um, have in place and this is the problem the IMF won't give its support and the EU also will be reluctant unless Hungary makes uh, uh, clear decisions to uh, compromise with the IMF and the EU. So some real concrete positive action needed from uh, Prime Minister Orban then. Well, Stefan, thank you very much. Plenty more on this story, of course, at our Emerging Markets blog, Beyond Bricks, at ft.com forward slash bb.